These are the Commander cards most worth buying for November 2022. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, joined by Amber, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. We got videos every day. We're back from Vegas officially. Everything else you saw was pre-recorded. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do it is to go to Patreon.com. That's the way you can give us direct money. Make sure Amber gets fed every day so she can rub up against my stupid microphone. And we would have loved you as much as we can without making you uncomfortable like the real G-Dub. Yes, the real G-Dub. Thank you for supporting this channel. And this video specifically brought you by Into the AM, the best clothing apparel company on the planet? Probably on the entire wow, planet. officially. We haven't even been calling them that before, but now they are officially the best. Yes, and they have awesome shirts, greatly stylized, extremely comfortable. Let me tell you something about this. You know how the, you know these shirts are comfortable? My brother, who doesn't give a crap about fashion, is wearing these shirts. That means that they are the most comfortable things in the world if he's buying them right now. That's me too. I don't have any fashion at all. And yeah, I just wear them because they're comfortable, they look cool, they give you free compliments. It's a free compliment glitch, and honestly. Now, and now, guess what's coming up? Because we are in the month of November. We have Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales coming up. 30 to 80% off everything. Come on. It, with our link, an additional 10% off. Meaning, if you find one of those 80% deals, you're paying 10% for something. And that is just, what were they... Uh, Completely insane. Ten percent or or twelve percent, whatever it ends up coming out. Get some get some super duper details, de de deals, super duper deals on these super detailed shirts, and you're gonna have a great time. There's there's and so sports awesome. channel at the same time. Yeah, you'll be supporting the channel, getting awesome wear, and looking as the kids say, swaggy. This is a long ad, but I don't care because I love this company. We also love Moxville.com, who supports the whole channel with a sponsorship. And there's gonna be an ad that you won't be able to predict later. And happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. All right. Today is the cards most worth buying for the month. Remember, these are not cards to speculate on. These are not cards that are going to definitely go up. No, these are cards that are worth the dollar amount when you buy them. Now, rules for this video, nothing under $2. That's what we're going to buy. We're going into our budget bomb territory, so we don't want to cross over too much. So in this video, we'll be doing cards, you know, two and up. And like I said, don't. Just speculate on these. That's not what we're telling you to do. Be, I want to be so clear about that. Yeah, these are fantastic buys that you could put in your commander decks right now and be super happy with them. Yes, they're worth buying maybe to have some on the side or to put in the deck. They're not worth buying for speculation. Let's go to the first one. It's Blood for the Blood God. $11, 11 mana, but not really. It's more like four, three mana. Just throw out 24 damage and draw eight cards. This card is really, really good. And, uh, like, we've been, we've been you know, putting this card on a pedestal, saying it's great since it's been spoiled. And it's $11. The question is, how, when, and how often can we see this reprinted, right? It's at $11. That's probably the lowest we're going to see it in a while. If The only thing I could see is it going, like, staying there. It's not going down. And Blood for the Blood God is an amazing magic card. If you're playing a deck with three or more board wipes and you're in black red... I'm in for this card. That's Sack what, outlets? Sack. Other board wipes. This is still a response to board wipes that aren't yours. Exactly, because this card is an instant. You can hold it up. It's perfect for a deck that has lots of instant speed interaction. We're already holding up that mana, so when a board wipe comes down, you can be like, all right, I'll just go ahead and blood for the blood god. Yeah, it's super great. Even if you don't have a sack outlet, it's like, just attack with everything. Something's going to die. You're going to trade off in combat and then cast this for like six mana. It's still great. It's is a it's it is a great card in the right deck. So if you have a deck for it, you should absolutely get it. Also works great. Any every single version of Vile Smasher is playing this card. Oh yeah, that's that's really awesome. Uh, let's go to number two. It's Apex Devastator. Currently thirteen dollars. Now this is one that is expensive and it's expensive for what it does. Uh, first thing I want to say, not a high power card. Uh, and by that I mean right. like if you're, it's a combo meta, Apex Devastator isn't the card we're looking. Don't to show play. up with Apex Devastators. Now if we're going into a combat meta. Apex Devastator, I have almost, I've never seen this cast, and the player who cast it isn't had on board. And I've seen some bad ones. I've gone like ramp spell, ramp spell, and then the, it's like one threat and a bad card. It's like, oh, and I'm still a threat because I have a 10 10 and I got one card. Yeah, let alone if there's other things triggering, like, oh, there's like a Soul of the Harvest in play, or I'm getting like landfall triggers. It's just like, whoa, slow down. Yeah, Apex Devastator is, it's absurdly strong. Like, it's a card that I think we put low because to start because we're like, you know, it's a 10 drop. How many 10 drops are really that good? But this card really does. And on top of all the cascading it does, it does provide that 10 10 body that is useful for anything that where the power matters or if you can give it trample. Yeah. Apex Devastator, much better than it looks. Don't bring it to combo parties. Yes. It is not a combo meta card. Yeah. Morag, Fury of a Coem, pretty versatile in terms of 
what power level you can play it, because this thing can go janky or all the way up to you're dead immediately. This is a $6 card for the showcase version. It might be even cheaper than that, and the art's even better. This thing just gives you lots of extra combat, especially if you're in green, but even like mono red can just start throwing burner starts, wayfarers bubbles, alpine guides out, and all of a sudden you're taking a million damage from the tiniest of creatures. Yeah, exactly. I saw this uh, as the commander of a deck recently. Yeah, in Vegas. It, it just absolutely started to run us over. This silly little, uh, what was it? Tin Street Dodger, the 1-1. One, one. Tin Street Dodger was, was just, like dealing 10 damage a pop. Yeah, because it just it would go 1, 2, 3, and that would be the turn. And like obviously they're playing fetch lands, they're playing ways to get extra land jobs all the time. Morag, and that's a mono red deck. Mono red's not good at landfall. Put this in a green deck and see what it does, because this card will absolutely pop off, because now all your ramp, all your spell-based ramp, just turns into an extra combat. Oh, Fire Seek comes with an extra combat. Just seems like one of the best red finishers in this, period. like, yeah, period. Period. It's one of the best red finishers, period, when you're not in a couple meta. Right. Let's go to Kappa Cannon here. This wrecked Legacy for a little bit, because that format's real. This is three, that's like four dollars. And you can improvise. You want to basically tap all your dumb artifacts that don't do anything, play this out, and then for some reason it triggers itself. Now, not a lot of people know that. I have no idea why. Probably because they just screwed it up. But then... Whenever you play anything, this thing just gets huge and can't be blocked. And it already is hard to kill because it has Ward 4. Yeah, Ward 4 makes it extremely hard to kill. And if people are killing it, they're overpaying. For Way sure. overpaying. Even if they have a Swords of Plowshares, they're playing 5 mana Swords of Plowshares on this. Even Snuff Out. That's yeah. not even free Snuff Out anymore. It's 4 mana Snuff Out. Exactly. So this card is just great. It is a beater. It grows so fast. When your deck is super heavy artifacts and you're able to like make like 3 treasures at a time, you know, all your creatures are artifacts, every spell you play, some of your lands... Our artifacts, this thing all of a sudden is a 10-10 that can't ever be blocked. So play players will have to spend their removal or wipe the board or die. That are, the choices are wipe the board, die, or play really crappy removal spell. Yeah, this card really just really overperforms every time. I, I love it. I think it's great. You can make copies of it, go go even more ham with it. And it just is like a, a threat in a can. There's nothing nothing else to it. Play this, play magic. Now your opponents are in, in some hot water. Uh, Question? Yes. What the hell puts it in a can? What makes it in a can? It's a threat in a can. It's cannoneer. <laughs> okay. 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 I was. Yeah. I really bailed myself out with that. <laughs> you really saved yourself there. Next, the card. Some for some reason we've never talked about on most worth buying, but it is Teferi's protection, and it is at a pretty dang low price of eighteen dollars. We've talked about this card a lot on this channel, and it is just amazing. Period. It is the version of fog, the version of protecting your board, the version, whatever version of that kind of card you want. This is it. This is the very best, and not only is it playable, it takes the effects like, you know, a lot of decks don't necessarily need a save your board effect. A lot of decks don't necessarily need a, an effect to, like, save you from, like a, like, a fog. It is purely defensive most of the time. Exactly. But this card is so good, it makes decks want it. And, like, that's really saying something for an effect that is purely defensive. Yeah, this card is fantastic. We Go check out our top 100 white cards in the entire format. This is in the top five. I won't spoil where it is, but literally one of the best white cards, period. For eighteen dollars, yeah, it it just does everything you want out of this type of effect. Like, I mean, it's it, this thing's been up to as high as thirty, and it still felt worth it. So, it, oh, it's definitely worth it at thirty. Uh, get to phrase protection. It's such a good magic card. Just like War Room, which is a three dollar land, it taps and draws a card. You pay life equal to your mana value or the colors in your commander. So, like, oh, I got a green white commander. I'm paying two life and three mana plus tapping this to draw a card. It's just an untapped mana source. So you really don't feel a lot of pushback on it. And if you're one or two colors, if you have nothing better to do, you just draw a card every turn. This is a 100% include, I think, in monocolor decks. It's, for sure. It's really hard, except for maybe mono black, where you really want that swamp mana base. Even then, maybe. Uh, but War Room is just very, very good. It's bailout. It's, it's, you're not going to use it. You're going to use it for mana 99% of the time. But then, when you're in that bad situation, you bail yourself out with this land. And when you're playing a one-color deck, it just costs you one life. That's nothing. That's Phyrexian Arena, actually. Yeah. It's like, oh, we need a board wipe. We need a removal spell. I need to draw a blocker. Well, here you go. Here's extra card draw built into your deck without any without taking up a slot. It, it doesn't sacrifice anything, especially in one-color decks. Two-color decks, you feel it a little bit more, and like it does actually take up a slot in your deck. Three-color decks, you avoid it, but... One and two, you can really get in there without feeling much negative impact. Yeah, this card is great, and I'm surprised it's only three dollars because it goes in so many decks. Yes, exactly. I, I, I would like I said, every single monocolor that's not black, everyone. How would you know if it went in every deck though? Uh, I would know because I'd be checking on Maxfield.com, the best deck building website on the entire planet, internet, multiverse. Uh, 
universe. It's so weird that we only collect sponsors of the best of any given thing on the entire planet. It is quite strange, uh, but our sponsors really are quite amazing. Moxfield, we use for every single one of our decks. You can go there, check out any nitpicky nerds deck you want. Seriously. There's 150 of them now, I think. There's, there's so many decks, and we keep building. We build new decks all the time. What's your newest deck on there, BZ? I'm cooking up some kind of Belladros Witherbloom shenanigans. I'm, I'm really I'm really liking how it's looking so far. Is that public? It's about to be. It's going to be public for you. I don't think BZ's finished with you yet, so you can watch BZ's thought process as he goes through and makes that deck. Yeah, I'm in a 115-card pile right now. Yeah, Maxwell.com. We love you. We love you. We also love Reanimate. It's $8. It's one mana, and it's just the most efficient thing on the entire planet. It's just the... It's the best way to reanimate on the entire planet. And we're so happy to be sponsored by Reanimate this, for this video. <laughs> reanimate is the best reanimation spell in the entire Commander format, period. I think it might be the best reanimation spell ever printed. It's up there. I mean, reanimation is literally named after this card, right? So you can't beat the rate. You literally cannot beat this rate. So the fact that it's only $8... I feel like I'm getting getting my money's worth for sure. And you know you're going to need Reanimate for a deck. It's a whole strategy, Reanimator. This one is surprising to me that it is so low. Uh, I think it's just slowly crawled down uh, over the past year, year and a few half. reprints here and but, there. But like, it, it was up to 20 and like maybe 25 It was definitely a card that was expensive. $8? Like I said, it was worth that $25. It, it'd be worth it at $30. This card, is, this card actually is like probably $50, $60 strong because it is that good of a magic card. So when you can get it for $8, that is not only worth it, it's probably most worth buying. Yeah, and this is one of the reanimation targets that's like not even, or reanimation spells, that's like not even dead, like some spells can be, like, oh, yeah, I'm Burial Rites or something like that. It's like, well, my graveyard's empty. What if your opponent just plays like a Sakura Tribelt or something? It's like, great, bail out, my reanimator is now a ramp spell. Or, oh, here's a here's a Warp Card engine that just got milled. Boop, it's mine. That's true. Like, I never thought about that. That's, it, oh. It's a Teddy Graveyard. <laughs> it just has a silly interaction with Sakura Tribal that early in the game, I could just be like, eh, I'll pay two life to ramp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, I guess. Next, we have Bruce Tower Borish Herder at $5. I have been very happy with this card in the 99. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, very good commander, great partner, uh, used a lot there. But in the 99, doesn't see as much play, and I have just been super happy with it. The life swings are so heavy with this, and what I actually love about this card and what really takes it to like oomph like where i want to play it like oomph. give it the extra gives the extra oomph, oomph. is what i meant to say uh is that it has need it's an etb um if you if this was on attacks i'd be like mm. bruce tarl you're pretty mad but the fact that it comes down you don't have to do anything just etb get that ability yes yeah we play this in very different decks you have an attacks matter deck where you can double up the triggers for it and then i have it in like a niv mizza deck where it's a multicolored card great every spell in my deck is multicolored but it's like oh it doesn't even seem that good i threw it into c and it's like well let's my commander's kind of big and it's flying let's double strike and lifelink it oh that's amazing yeah exactly uh, this is another one that it is all about the attacks right like not about the combo don't do that yeah, i mean you know us we've lowered our power level recently we're not playing with infinites anymore yeah exactly so bruce tyrell if you're playing combat and it matters the life gain is super relevant the double strike is super relevant the whole card everything it does the is pillar just, field locks in the background super relevant it, it, super relevant because he references he, he yells at it yeah he yeah he is a big jerk to pillar field locks. he's a big jerk you know who else were jerks with the phyrexians they got this tower that sacks creatures to make two black mana it's only 16 dollars and it's actually one of the best lands in the entire format so i'm obviously stoked to pick it up for this price yes it's another one of those lands that you don't feel uh it comes in it's untapped it makes carless mana and yeah that's that can and yeah that's not the best sometimes but when it taps and it makes two mana by sacrificing some useless stupid creature that your aristocrat deck is playing Oh, it's now the best, one of the best lands in all of Commander because it's making two mana. It's colored mana. It's not even colorless. This card does everything. It's very strong. Part of what can be so backbreaking is you can play a spell, play a creature with some kind of dice trigger, like, oh, I got a Protein Hulk or Kakusho or whatever, and then it's in play, and now with this land, there's nothing they can do. If this spell resolves and you want it dead, tap, sacrifice the creatures, the cost, it's gone. Yeah, exactly. It is such an amazing card. And again, just, we talked about War Room. It's... It, a land. You're getting so much out of this land. Utility of being able to sacrifice creatures is amazing. I mean, that's on top of everything it does. It's a sack outlet. It's a land. It's ramps. It's literally ramp. It just puts the creatures in your graveyard. Sack outlet in the land. We're, we talk about how um, High Tower is a, or High Tower, High Market is a playable card in Commander, and you get nothing for sacking the creature. You get something when you sack the creature with this. You get something amazing. So if you don't have Phyrexian Towers in your black decks, you probably need them because they're great. And you really 
don't even need that many creatures, as it seems like, to make this great. Yes. Because it's a land that makes colorless. Exactly, yeah. Especially in your one and two color decks where you're not going to get punished as much. Oh, yeah. Next, a card that is just not going up to 30 or $40, so we're going to keep telling you how awesome it is to buy. Savala, Heart of the Wilds, currently $15. This card wins games, period. If you don't answer it, you're dead. You're going to lose. If you don't answer it and you lose later... It's because of Salvala. I'll tell you right when you lost is when you let them tap it for mana. Salvala, even in the worst case scenarios, it's going up one mana and has the ability that whenever the biggest creature enters, draw a card. So that's going to mostly work for you because you're going to make the deck. You built your deck around it. You built your deck all, with it. Yeah, all the big creatures in it. This card gets so stupid so fast. It is extremely rare that someone untaps with a Salvala and they don't pop off because mm -hmm. they, they have an extra 10, 15 mana sometimes because this card is silly. Yeah, all you have to do is, oh, you know, Savala's in play. Play my commander. It's a 4-4. Four, four. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Draw a card. Make five mana in any combination of colors. Play another thing. Maybe draw another card. It just... And then, the problem is, there was a bunch of threats in play that she powered out. But if you don't, if you just answer her, then you got threats to deal with. She's just too late. She's literally... She's card draw and ramp on the same card. Those two things go together really, really well if you didn't know. Yeah, if you did not know. The, uh, the other thing that goes well is another great land. This is like the... The lands episode because we got Poseju who endures. Pre-ordered super high, it was like forty, thirty-five dollars, but now it's only twenty-five dollars. And this is this lived up to the hype. It's amazing. It's literally another MDFC that's an instant. It's either naturalized or whatever you want, or a land and enters untapped. It makes colored mana. There's nothing to dislike here. Yeah, it's an absolutely terrible naturalized if you look at it just that way. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, this is an untapped green source that costs you nothing. I'm playing this in one, I'm playing this in my mono green decks, I'm playing in my two color green decks, and I'm playing in my three color green decks. Period. This is the only one of these I'm going up to three colors and because the effect is absolutely over the top, ridiculous amounts of strong. Yeah, the other four, they're great. They're fine. But they're more expensive to do. This is only two mana and you have a commander most of the time, so it's really only green to do it. And it's the best one because it's removal. I mean, yes. you can bounce something with the blue one. That's not as good. It is. I mean, it's, the blue one's strong, but it Boseju also just, for some reason, it, like you said, two mana. Yeah. It's getting reduced. You have a commander. The commander, that means it costs one green mana. Naturalize it. Sure, they get a land, but you're going to answer whatever that you start with. I'll get rid of your Gaia's Cradle. Sure, you get a land back, but I got rid of Gaia's Cradle. I'll get rid of your Fraxian Tower or your War Room because I don't want you drawing cards. This thing is an auto-include just like the rest of them at one and two color decks, and this one even goes further than that, and I can see it in almost any deck. Yes. Next, we have Getaxian Probe. Currently, $2. This is a really good spell singer card. It's great for upping your storm count. It's great for just casting another spell to trigger whatever thing you have on the board. Your Goblin Electromancers. I think decks that, not Goblin Electromancer, uh, Gutter Snipe Gutter is snipe. what I meant. So when you have things like Gutter Snipe in your deck and you're playing those type of effects, this card suddenly becomes not only good, great. Now you just, no mana, look at someone's hand, get free information, draw a card, deal two damage to each player. Yeah, this card is really sneaky. Because uh, I think it flew under the radar for a long time and just magic in general. It's one of the best magic cards ever printed. It's not fair. It's completely out of control. This could realistically go in any blue deck in the entire format and you would barely notice anything. Because it basically just makes your deck one less card. You filter it immediately every time. Plus you get a lot of useful free information that on top of that, in addition to being broken in 1v1, in multiplayer you can use it for like political gain. And this thing, it's just, it's no mana. It's zero mana and has a bunch of text. Exactly. It's a literal zero mana spell. When you, it, All I want is synergy. You give me a little bit of synergy with this card or reason to play it. Maybe I like losing life. That's enough reason I'm putting a taxi pro in my deck now. I just, maybe I just like paying two life. I'm not like losing yeah, life. if your deck wants you to. There's synergy with losing life. I'm a deck, I'm a death shadow deck. Font of agonies. <laughs> exactly. Fire Covenant. How about it? It's $3 currently and this card is absolutely amazing. Now, I think it's super important when you're playing Fire, Fire Covenant in a deck because what it does is you pay life and you can deal that much damage divided <laughs> yeah, exactly uh, among any targets. Be careful. You want life gain in your deck. I think it's super important to be able to get this cost a lot of life. Now, in a higher power version, like in if you're playing like CDH 9s, you don't need life gain to negate it because you're fine. It'll just pay, be great. You're fine just paying the life. If you're playing that combat meta where you're going to get attacked, I love having things. One of some of my favorite combinations that go with it, Sangomancer, Blood Artist, any of those type of effects are perfect with it. Yeah, there's probably some spells that give your um, cards that give your spells lifelink too. 
There's things to do that, and that's not even fair. Radiant scro scroll wheeler. Yeah, there's this this card gets really dirty because there's a lot of like wombo combos, like you said, Sangromancer, Blood Artist, uh, giving it lifelink, but also just having like it only goes it only hits creatures. But if you have a Brash Taunter out, you just throw it all at a Brash Taunter. And you can just kill somebody with this spell, and you never pay more than three mana. It's so efficient that it hurts. You can give it uh, you can give it lifelink and death touch actually because there's oh. there is there are, there's a card that gives it lifelink and there's a card that gives it death touch. Yeah, the persistent Pest, pestilent spirit. It's pestilent spirit. I believe that is correct. What what what's next? Get the next one. Uh, it's reshape the earth. It's only six dollars and it's nine mana. But you go and get ten lands. That's a lot of numbers and put them all into play tapped. The thing I think that pushes this card to being so worth six dollars is just the fact that Field of the Dead exists. Valkut the Molten Pinnacle exists, and they only need to be in your deck to change the entire text of this card. Because now it's nine mana, make ten zombies and go get the best ten lands in your deck. Or deal 28 damage or something and go get the best mountains in your deck. This thing really, I think, is like a card you can kind of tap out for and win the game. This is also like the staple, you know, the one of the cards to fear when it comes to Maze's End decks. Oh, I got my, you know, uh, Tiller Engine or uh, Amulet of Vigor, reshape the earth, game over. You know what? The number is not divisible by three. 28. The 28. One you said. Yeah. yeah, 27, though, very divisible by three. Well, I, no, I got uh, seven mountains, at, no, eight, eight mountains, nine mountains, and one Sun Scorched Desert. <laughs> But then you didn't, so you have Valakut out already. Yeah, yeah. Of okay, course. that's that makes a lot of sense. Duh. Like you said, reshape the earth is just a big win con. It's also perfect for your um, mazes on decks. Where that's the absolute finisher. This card is surprising to me because when it was printed and I looked at it, I said, this "Pass." This whole cycle was like, Bleh. it was. It was. It was a very much just a pass card. But it does. It puts away games because by itself, it puts you so far ahead. And even if. You it like say you get the field of that you do that it gets wiped right afterward. Now you untap and you're up an additional ten mana every turn for the rest of the game. They you're, didn't answer this card. They answered your zombie. You're untapping with probably about twenty mana, if not more, after this thing resolves. It's so good. It's a card that if it doesn't end the game, puts you in a position to win the game from there. Yeah, I think you're guaranteed arch enemy bare minimum for the rest of the game. Next we have Dictate of Erebos. Currently twelve. Dollars, and I've actually seen a lot of discussion around this card of it not being fun. I've seen that lately. I, it is kind of a rule zero y, you know, like if it's in play, your opponents don't have creatures. Yes, when you play the go wide aristocrat deck like that, this card dominates every single time to the point that people can't keep anything on the board. It can cause games to be almost miserable, but it's not because this card is bad. No, this card is so good, it causes misery. It kind of is like a lethal vapors, they have to answer it. Or they don't get to play. It's really simple. I, I don't know what to tell them. I'm sorry, you have to answer my dictate because it's in play and you're going to lose. It just runs the game when it's on the board. It's so silly, annoying, and, well, very good and strong. Yeah, so would I pay $12 for an emblem that says my opponents can't play creatures in the right decks? Yes, I would. And if you want to know other cards make clickbaity emblems that you can put in play, there's another video about really good cards to buy from last month that still applies right now, so go watch it. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.